So now the machine knows where it is um, with respect to its end stops, and it knows where it is with respect to at least the single point that we probed on the bed. But if we call up a tool now, there's no guarantee that that tool is exactly the same length as the probe. Actually, none of these tools will be the same length as the probe. Um, so we have to, to apply what's called a tool offset. And a tool offset just compensates um, in position for a changing location of the center line endpoint of the tool. So if you think of this, this probe, the point that we care about is the, the bottom uh, surface, the bottom point of the spherical surface along its center line. That's, that's our probe uh, zero point. And then when we bring up, say, spindle one, we have a, a tool of different length. And um, in this case, you saw X and Y move, but Z didn't move. That's because I'm already at the end stop. Now, if I bring up the probe again, you'll see it this time. So in, in the control, you can actually see that, the, that our Z value changed. Because we're all the way up at the top of our travel, the machine um, changed its location to 200.99. So there, there's a difference of around 15 millimeters between the, the probe length and the tool length. So if I bring up the, the probe again, now it's going to say the probe is at 200.99. And what happened there is it, it brought the, um, the machine down, it brought the arm down to the point where the probe would be, the probe endpoint would be at the same point as the, the tool endpoint just was. So one more time, bring up spindle one. So somehow we have to get the tool offsets. We have to, we have to figure out where this tool is with respect to um, the probe. So in, in thinking about the, the coordinate system of the machine overall, our probe defines our, our zero point for all our tool offsets, because that's the thing that we can actually use to measure. Our tools are all referenced based on that. Um, so we're going to come down, probe the bed, and, and then we know where the bed is with respect to the travel of the z-axis. And then we have to basically do the same thing with the, uh, the tools. So the first thing to set when you're working with this machine is your uh, z offsets for all your tools. That's, that's number one in terms of avoiding crashes, is just make sure that you have the, the correct lengths of your tools um, defined in the software. So we'll go through that now. And there, there are multiple ways to do this. Um, I'm going to use one of the simplest and oldest techniques, which, which is just using cigarette paper. So we're going to jog the machine down until the, uh, the tool is getting close to the bed. And in smaller and smaller increments, we're going to come down toward the bed. And we could actually see in the reflection in the, the Kapton um, how far away the tool is from the bed. And once we're within about a millimeter, we're going to want to take a piece of cigarette paper and in Colorado, that's quite easy to find. Um, we're going to take that cigarette paper, put it underneath the, the tool, between the tool and the bed, and then just jog it down until we see it starting to get close. And now, this is a point where you want to be very careful in interacting with this machine. Um, you're going to have your hand uh, underneath, or, or at least close to um, the, the region that is dangerous uh, while the machine's in operation. So what I like to do in this case is rather than using my mouse and trying to click the button on the mouse, which can move uh, when, I'm, when I'm not looking at it, I, I use the, the, the buttons on my keyboard here so that I'm not, I'm not touching the touchpad. I know that the, the mouse is going to stay at the same point. So using the 0 .05 um, jog button in Z, I'm coming down, and I'm, I'm continually sliding the paper 
while I'm jogging the axis down until I can feel the paper won't move anymore. Um, so that means that, that the tool is in contact with the paper and pushing it into the surface of the bed. Now what I'm going to do is come up two steps and then I'm going to right click on this button and I can change the value. So instead of 0.05, I'm going to change that to 0 0.01. So that's 10 microns. Um, 50 microns is a pretty big increment. We want to be much more accurate than that when we're, we're setting our tool lengths. For multi-material printing, and um, especially for milling with multiple tools, you will notice um, if you don't have your tools dialed in uh, to somewhere in the 10 to, to 30 micron range. So now I'm going to repeat that process just in 10 micron increments. And you can, you can often feel when it's just in contact with the paper. So now in our control screen, we'll go to the offsets page and then look at tool one. Um, and we can see our Z offset here. It's negative 14.47. And when we look at our Z location, we should be at the thickness of the paper if we're just in contact with the paper. This paper is only about um, 20 microns thick. So I'm going to use these jog buttons. These actually aren't jog buttons. I'm going to use these um, adjustment buttons on the Z offset to um, get that value to 20 microns. So we're at positive 0 0.02. So that means we're uh, with the, with tool one. Since we're we have tool one selected here, we're at uh, 0.02 millimeters above the surface that we probed previously with the with the Z probe. So let's go back to our machine control. And now before we uh, switch tools, we want to make sure that we come up in Z because we haven't set our tool lengths, or we haven't at least checked our tool lengths uh, for the rest of these tools. So if we were to, to call up tool two and the Z offset was set incorrectly, it would lift up, um, change tools, and then come back, try to come back down to the same location. But if the tool length was set too short, it would crash that tool directly into the bed. So we're gonna come up in Z, say 25 millimeters, say 50 millimeters to be safe. We'll call up spindle two. And so we're gonna repeat that same process. So now we're gonna, we're gonna do that with all of these tools. Um, with the spindles, we'll just leave them, uh, leave them off. But with the, um, with the extruders, what you'll wanna do is heat up the extruder Make sure the nozzle is clean, so a brass brush or a piece of cloth or something to get rid of um, any, any um, excess material that has oozed out of the nozzle. You could also run a prime cycle. We'll talk about that later um, in order to, to clean off the nozzles to start with. But however you do it, make sure that when you're setting the offsets of the extruders, you heat them up pretty close to the temperature that you're going to want to use them at and um, you, you get them very clean, and then bring them down and do the, the, the same procedure in order to set the offsets. So something else I should have said is when you need to make a, a large adjustment in your offset value, you can just click on the value and type in a new one. So, and you can just test it out, see what direction you're going. Um, so in this case, we're gonna be closer to zero. So one thing to be aware of is when you're, when you're making these adjustments, be careful not to um, use the wrong buttons. So if you, if you make adjustments to your other offsets while you have this tool up, it will um, still save those offsets for the other tools. So be careful of that. Go back to my machine control, come up 50, bring up tool number three. So in this case, so in, in order to heat up all the extruders at once, rather than selecting each one of them, I can just go to control all, set my active temperature, I'm going to go with 220, set my standby temperature 220 as well. So I'm going to take a paper towel here and just clean off the end of the nozzle. 
um, to make sure that it's the nozzle making contact with the paper and not some glob of material. And now I'll come back down 25, 25. I'm going to move the paper out of the way so I can see the nozzle approaching the bed.